Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at Mr. P. Lieberman at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Factoring, how to factor and what to look for. Now in this short little video, what we're gonna be looking at is just a brief um, idea of factoring and really what you should be looking for in terms of factoring a, a problem. So if you come across a problem, um, what are you gonna look for in that problem to help you figure out which type of factoring you should use um, with when the question asks you to factor that question. So, things to look for. Very first thing you should always look for anytime you get a problem is if, it, if you're asked to factor, first and foremost step to look for is to look for the common factor. Look for a factor, either a number, a letter, or a set of letters that can be removed from every single term in your, um, in your question, okay? Now, after you've looked for that first term, that, that common factor, if you can find a common factor, or if you cannot find a common factor, then you look for the following things. If you have two terms, if your question has two terms, you do one of the following. You either look for what we call the difference of squares, Okay. And a difference of squares means that if you had uh, an expression as follows, okay, um, a squared minus b squared, it was equal to a plus b times a minus b. Okay? That's what we call the difference of squares or factoring by a difference of squares. So our question would have been this right here up at the top. One term, two terms. So we have two terms, you look for the difference of squares. You're, in a difference of squares, you're looking for numbers that can be square rooted, okay? And contains this negative sign. But again, if you're looking for a lesson on difference of squares, please uh, look for my other podcasts on uh, these different types of factoring procedures, okay? Another thing in terms of two steps is if you've already found the common factor, you probably already factored your question the furthest it can go. It might not be factorable anymore. Okay, so now after the two terms, you might be looking for three term type um, of polynomials, which are called trinomials. And in terms of three term polynomials, you have one of these three options. Your trinomial is in the form of A is equal to one, where your expression might be as follows. Um, a, uh, oops, I mean, it's not ax, it's in the form of x squared plus bx plus c, where the steps to factoring, you're trying to find two numbers that multiply to c that add up to a, and you'll get some kind of uh, expression x plus whatever something, and x plus, let's say something, or x minus and minus, whatever you might end up finding. But remember that these numbers, in these type of polynomials, they're usually not the same, okay? Uh, sometimes you might get a, a term for your a value, which we have the expression ax squared plus bx plus c, where again, we might have uh, some kind of uh, value here. Um, Okay, some kind of other way, but again, look for uh, the lessons on uh, factoring trinomials when A is not equal to 1. Okay, again, uh, these two steps, okay, you're using what we call the sum product rule. Okay, and another thing in terms of three, term, uh, three terms, you're looking for something called the perfect square trinomial in which you have some a squared plus um, b, I'm um, oh, sorry, ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, where if you were to find the, uh, the square roots of the outer terms, uh, you'll have uh, an expression that somehow fits what we call here the a plus b all squared rule. Uh, and these are what we call special products, 
Okay, another thing in terms of the uh, three terms polynomial, if you cannot do one of these three, okay, if you cannot find a common factor, then probably it is not possible to factor out these type of um, three term um, polynomials, okay, Tri or otherwise known as trinomials. And lastly, if you have four terms, what you're looking for is factor by grouping, where you have your, um, your four different um, monomials, your, your, your four term polynomial, and you group the first two terms, and you group the last two terms, and you factor what we call by grouping, okay? And if you cannot factor by grouping, then you have probably already factored from the common factor. So if you've got, if you cannot do this, probably this is where your option lies and it would have already been done at the very first step, okay? Anything beyond four terms, so any polynomial, okay, any polynomial of uh, five or more terms will only be able to be factored uh, by common factors method. So by trying to identify what are the common uh, variables, uh, numerical terms that can be removed from each and every single term in your polynomial.